highest flying super fighter in all the world. And during the following program, Mr. Hall Hibbard, Vice President and Chief Engineer of Lockheed Aircraft Corporation, will bring you the inside story about this great new plane. Lockheed presents The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. With the music of Felix Mills. Produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. The makers of Lockheed Airplanes present Herbert Marshall as the man called X. International troubleshooter who flies the ocean at the drop of a hat. Who charms the ladies but is death on crooks. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Listen to this, Chief. London, February the 13th, Associated Press. The Moscow radio quoted Stockholm reports tonight that the mayor of Berlin, Ludwig Stieg, had been shot to death for cowardice. Yeah, Ken. One report says that he tried to leave Berlin, but was recognized, arrested, and executed. Yeah. The tougher the going, the tougher Hitler, Himmler, and company have to get, even with their own bigwigs. That's okay with me, Ken. They're just doing some of the dirty work we'd have to do. Right, Nancy. But unfortunately, some of them are going to slip through. Some of the worst. For instance, Chief? Well, for instance, we've got a tip that Schweitzer is going to try to get out. Schweitzer? Yep. Reichsbank, economic minister. Why, he probably has more vital information in his head than any other man in Germany. Can't let him get away, Chief. Yep. If he gets out, it's just too bad. Hmm. Yeah, it's too bad somebody can't go to, into Berlin and help him escape. Great idea, Ken. Kind of ridiculous, too. Oh, I was just speculating. Yeah, it's out of our jurisdiction, too. Hmm. Anybody who did it would have to be in his own. Yeah. Yes, well, Nancy, let's go. See you later, Chief. Okay, Ken. I'll have something else for you to do in a few days. Mm -hmm. Bye, Nancy. Bye, Chief. Oh, and don't strain yourself looking for another assignment for Ken. Berlin, huh? Well, you heard the Chief. It's out of our jurisdiction. Well, don't let it get you down. Huh? What would you like to do today, darling? Oh, I don't know. How about dropping in on Harold Annis? All right. Haven't seen Hal for ages. Oh, what's he doing now? Not he much. Colonel with the ATC. Yes. Oh, that's what... Wait a minute. What did you say? Yes, darling. Colonel Harold Annis of the Air Transport Command. Tell me, Hal, how close do your planes go to Germany? Russia. That's close enough, Ken. Uh-huh. Could, uh... Could you arrange a passage for a passenger? Well, yeah, I suppose I could. Hmm... Hmm. Hal, do you mind if Ken kisses me right in front of you? This I've got to see. Just something to remember you by, Ken. Well. Oh, darling. Darling, when you kiss me like that, I go on a plane trip myself to the stars. you like flying for the ATC, Captain? Sure, Mr. Thurston. Why, during the last couple of weeks, I've been in Cairo, Sydney, Burma, London, Paris, Saipan, and Long Beach, California. And next stop, Moscow. Yep. I'll just have time to say hello to Uncle Joe and go on to Cousin Chung in Chungking. <laughs> Hi, Pagan. Я приветствую вас от имени любимицы всех советских республик Москвы, красавицы, дорогой товарищ Терстон. Meaning? Hello. And welcome to Moscow, товарищ. Well said, Mr. Zelsmith. Did you get my message? Mr. X, I saw, I came, I conquest. Bravo. 
I have been busy mapping out some new strategies for the Red Army. But I was able to steal a precious moment to keep this appointment with you. Oh, so you even steal moments, eh, Pagon? Ah, but Mr. X, <laughs> a moment with you may lead to a fortune. Look, Pagon, you once told me you were a charter member of some band of roving rogues. What were they called? Oh, you mean the Continental Guild of Mercenaries? That's it. You still a member? Well, I haven't paid my dues lately, uh, but, uh, but I still have my connection. Good. We can use your fellow guildsmen. How? We have a job to do which, incidentally, should cover your delinquent dues and then some. That interests me profoundly, Mr. Thurston. But what do I do? Have you ever made a parachute jump? Who? Me? <laughs> Geronimo! <laughs> Great, Pagan. That would make anybody jump. Then let's go. All right. But where are we going? Just to Berlin. Oh, fine. I always... <laughs> There you are, Mr. Thurston. If you drop now, you'll land in the forest. Thank you, Major Malinoff. It is smart of you to pick a place where we wouldn't have to dodge enemy flak. In this new plane, we could dodge anything. You better hurry and jump, or Marshal Zhukov will be in Berlin before you are. Okay. You ready, Pagan? Uh, don't you think, well, maybe perhaps we can wait a little while? Just close your eyes and jump. Uh, you first, my dear Thurston. After you, Pagan. But I insist. Okay, but Major, you'll uh, you'll take care of my friend, won't you? To your entire satisfaction, Mr. Thurston. Good luck to Varsic. Good luck to you. So long. He did it. He did it. It's very simple. Now watch. I will show you a little trick. With a flick of my finger, my beautiful plane rolls over on its side. So. Ah! Woo! Good luck to Varsic. separately, Pagan. My miserable life is on your head, Mr. X. Don't worry about my head. Just use yours. Mix in with the refugees on the road. Now, here's our plan. I'm going to make a little call on Schweitzer. Uh, not old money bags. Yeah. The head man of the Reichsbank. Oh, I... Are we going to rob the bank? We've got something more important to do. But first, we've got to decide on a meeting place. Now, let's see. Let, oh, Putsy. Putsy? Haven't I told you about Putsy? A 32nd cousin. Oh? A Zelschmidt's black sheep uh, on the Bulgarian side. Where does he live? Uh, due to the misfortunes of his ill-starred career, he is living at 57 Sauerbratenstrasse. But uh, what are you doing to do, Mr. James? Pagar, you've inspired me. I have? How much is it worth to me? You know, I've, just, I've studied your duplicities for a long time, and at last I found a good use for them. I'm going to double-cross a crook to bait a trap for the crook. Herr Schweitzer. Herr Schweitzer. How did you get in? I don't know you. Who are you? Herr Schweitzer, you're planning to try to get out of Germany. Who are you? Oh, call me in. Uh, Call me X. X? What is this? Some joke? These are hardly times for joking, are they? As I was saying, you want to get out of Germany. But... Uh, but it seems impossible, doesn't it? Get out of here. Look here, Herr Schweitzer. You're a shrewd man. A wise man who would like to save his own skin. Don't move, whoever you are. I don't think you want to shoot me, Herr Schweitzer, because, you see... I can get you out of Germany. You? Just what makes you think? Uh, the shelter! Quick! Mm. The Americans are dropping their calling cards again. Oh, the swine! Come on! Hurry! Now, we'll be safe here. Not a very happy life, is it, Herr Schweitzer? It will be over soon. Oh, Father, here you are. I'm glad I wondered where you... 
Oh, a visitor? Yes, an uninvited visitor. He calls himself X. I see. I'm offering your father a chance to get out of Germany. Oh? And what do you say to that, father? Oh, don't take him too seriously, Elena, my dear. It's very amusing. Go on, uh, X. Let's be frank. Rather punctuates the defeat to come, doesn't it? Well, go on, go on with what you're saying. Yes, but defeat may not be the end of everything. Failure can sometimes be turned into profit. To speak your language, Herr Schweitzer. Uh, what do you expect to get with all this? A small measure of what you expect. A future made out of catastrophe. And all this, of course, is based on the assumption that Germany has lost the war. That's your assumption, isn't it? I know you played along with the Nazis because you thought it was good business. That doesn't sound like good business, does it, Herr Schweitzer? Huh? To stay here means utter ruin for you. It means the end of business. So, of course, you'll be interested in my proposal. Supposing I were interested, uh, how could I trust someone I don't know? Not I've ever heard of. You haven't been able to trust those you do know, so I wouldn't expect you to trust me except... But I shall profit as well as you if you get out. Get out to where? A plane will be waiting on the other side of the border. What border? We'll come to that later. What border? It doesn't matter. France, Italy, Yugoslavia. Uh, what about Bremna, this Gestapo? <laughs> you must think they are fools. Not for a minute. But there are some things that even Bremna can't stop. What do you say, Herr Schweitzer? I shall report you to the Gestapo. Won't Bremner be a little curious about the fact that you've been approached with this kind of proposition? Bremner's a suspicious man, you know. In case you uh, shouldn't report me to him, you'll uh, meet me at six o'clock this evening? You are very bold, aren't you? Maybe just foolish. I've offered your father a deal. I don't know whether you'll buy. May I expect to see you this evening, Herr Schweitzer? Perhaps. 57 Sauerbratenstrasse. But, Mr. X, what makes you so sure Herr Schweitzer is coming? If he weren't coming, I'd, I'd have been arrested long ago. Pagan, can we trust this cousin Putsy of yours? Mr. Thurston, of course not. He doesn't even trust himself. That's why he will be so useful. A true Zeltzman. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. But it's already five minutes past six and no Herr Schweitzer. It's worth waiting more than five minutes for Schweitzer, Pagan. Shh. Listen, Pagan. Shh. I'm busy, Putsi, later. But I have to talk to you. Small, small tail has just turned up. Well, all right. Excuse me, Mr. X. Don't mind Putsi. He's not very bright. I know. He's only a 30-second cousin. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but don't stay too long. We'll be shoving off as soon as Schweitzer gets here. If he gets here, Mr. X. You lose, Pagan. Herr Schweitzer keeps his appointments. Cousin Pagan, this is imperative. Be right back, Mr. X. Coming, coming. Oh. Yeah, Mr. X. The Gestapo. You are under arrest as a spy. <laughs> In a moment, we'll continue with Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to present a special visitor from Lockheed. He is Mr. Hall Hibbard, Vice President and Chief Engineer. Mr. Hibbard will talk about Lockheed's new fighting plane, the sensational jet-propelled shooting star, Mr. Hibbard. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I am glad to be able to tell you about the shooting star because I believe it to be more than merely a weapon of war. It is a significant airplane, significant in war and significant in peace. First of all, it may now be revealed that the development of jet-propelled aircraft in this country 
has always surpassed that in enemy countries. In fact, Lockheed has been working in this field for many years. Some months ago then, when the Germans introduced jet planes in the European theater, both the United States Army Air Forces and we here at Lockheed felt that we had something better. We had the jet-driven Lockheed Shooting Star, which had been secretly test flying for more than a year. The Shooting Star is an extremely fast, maneuverable, and high-flying airplane. It is the fastest plane in the world. We are naturally gratified to have designed such an airplane. But more important, the Shooting Star reaffirms the fact that American skill and American ingenuity can always turn out superior weapons. And now, a word about the future. In my opinion, the Lockheed Shooting Star introduces an entirely new chapter in the history of flight. It is just the beginning. We at Lockheed can foresee and are working toward the time, a matter of a few years, when the largest transports equipped with jet engines will fly across continents and oceans at tremendous speeds. Today, our job is to help maintain air supremacy for the United Nations. Tomorrow, with the knowledge thus gained, we hope to aid in maintaining a full and lasting peace. Thank you and good night. You've just heard a talk by Mr. Hall Hibbard, Vice President and Chief Engineer, Lockheed Aircraft Corporation. Thank you, Mr. Hibbard. Now to return to Lockheed's man called X, who has managed to get into Berlin, where he has been trying to kidnap one of the highest officials in all Nazism by helping him escape from Germany. But his plans have apparently blown up in his face, for he is now a prisoner of the Gestapo. At the moment, we find Mr. X in his cell, somewhat the worse for the customary treatment by the Gestapo. Uh, uh. Well, what are you going to use this time? Lashes or lighted cigarettes? Oh. Why don't you put on the light? You usually like to see your handiwork. Well, say something. You should never have come to see my father. Elena. You remember my name. <laughs> that isn't all I remember, Miss Wright. But I don't even know yours. How did you get in here? The way people usually get into places. Oh. <laughs> the Nazis have their little weak weakness, too. Why did you come? I couldn't help it. I had to see you again. But I feel foolish having to call you just X. My name's Ken. Ken? Oh. Why were you trying to help my father? For the reason I told him. For profit. But you look like a man of ideals, Ken. And you look like one of those ideals, Elena. Well? It's very sweet of you to come to see me. That's taking chances, you know. I told you I had to. Did they hurt you? What do you think? Oh, Ken. Mm. Ah. My mother used to tell me that a kiss would take away a hurt. She was right. That isn't why I kissed you. Elena, you tell me something? Yes. Did your father call the Gestapo? No. No, I did. That's what I thought. I still don't know who you are. You're still X, but you're a traitor to the Fuhrer. You would have made my father a traitor. I would kill him first. And me. Oh, the Gestapo will make you wish I had killed you. So this is the woman of the future. The Fräulein modeled after her Fuhrer. The essence of Nazi superiority. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Uh, ah. Fräulein Schweitzer. I have been expecting you, Herr Bremner. Our friend here is quite susceptible to lovemaking, but he says nothing. Perhaps lovemaking isn't the right method. Then I bow out in your favor, Herr Bremner. Leaving so soon, Miss Schweitzer. Herr Fjörter! Uh. Auf Wiedersehen, Elena. Not auf Wiedersehen. Goodbye. <laughs> Loveless specimen of your womanhood, Herr Bremner. We shall not talk of women, Mr. X. 
Is there a better subject? There is a more important one. Who are you? You seem to know. Who are you? Have a smoke. Who brought you those? Your Gestapo, of course. What do you mean? Oh, now, wait a minute. Have them. You, you know as well as I do. You can buy anything. In fact, your Gestapo has a very well-organized black market. Shut up. That's oh. enough, Hans. Go on, Mr. X. I've always thought of the Gestapo as an invincible, incorruptible machine. It's very interesting when you see it from the inside. Are so? Everyone a prisoner of everyone else. All linked together in a chain. But the chain is held together only by fear. Fear of each other. Stop! Mm. He will not tell us who you are. But uh, we do not need to know. We know enough. You are a spy. And spies are shot. When do you plan to give my little party? In the morning, Mr. X. Also, what me? back so soon. Have you changed your shooting schedule? Mr. X, you are an intelligent man. You could be very useful if you would talk. Apparently, I've talked too much. I know, of course, about your attempt at negotiations with Herr Schweitzer. Of course, his adoring daughter told you. You uh, were very sure you could get him out of Germany, weren't you? Yes. I see, but unfortunately, you will be shot in the morning. Yes, unfortunately. And you still won't talk? Mr. X? Yeah? Mr. X, can you get me out of Germany? to slaughter wagon once again. It's as sure as the sun comes up. Not a one to help them, the victims, eh? Mm. I wonder who it is this time. Driver, is it another field marshal you're burying? Sorry to disappoint you, old woman. All I've got today is an American spy. American? <laughs> Come along, Frida. A very bad character. <laughs> Mr. X. Mr. X. Are you dead or alive? I'm pinching myself, Pagan. Remna promised to put blanks in the guns, and I still have to sweat it out before that war. But how could you know he would really use blanks? Only because he was saving his own skin with them, or so he thought. Have Putsy and his mercenaries paved the road out for us and our celebrated companions? A regular fortune it cost, Mr. X. The road is paved with gold and silver. Yes, Pagan. But there's a rainbow at the end of it. Very hard in this ridiculous clothing. Ah, but Herr Bremner, who would suspect that two fat old ladies in black would be those well-known gentlemen, Bremner and Schweitzer? I, I must admit, Mr. X, the costumes have served their purpose. The idea came from Pagan, the fount of all chicanery. Thank you, Mr. X. Here we are. Here is the border. Doesn't seem much different, does it? Except that the air smells free. Nobody but me, gross Uncle Heinrich, knows this pass. Good for you, Uncle. Uh, Mr. X has your bonus for you, like I promised. That's right, Uncle. Here you are. Thank you, thank you, sir. Are you sure nobody but you knows this way out, old man? Nobody. I've lived here for seven... No. No, what are you... Uncle Heinrich! 
Well, Bremner, why did you shoot the old man? You think I'm a fool, Mr. X? Nobody will know how I left Germany. Or that I have left Germany. Oh? Nobody. No blanks in the gun now, huh? You're sure you're safe now, so suddenly you're a brave man. You've been a very convenient guide, Mr. X, but only one of us will uh, cost the board our life. You wouldn't dare kill me, Bremner. You, Schweitzer, who think only of money and... Who's there? It's a pig gun. Pig gun. Ah, Bootsy, you're a regular Marine. What is it? The American flyer. He's coming. Good. Americana. As I promised you, gentlemen, there's a plane waiting. A plane which will take you for a nice long ride to America. You'll never get me to... <coughs> nice work, Mr. X. Here, I have his gun. Come on, Bremner, get up. Schwein. Oh, I'm getting awfully tired of that word. But perhaps pigs know no other language. What are you trembling for, Bremner? And you, Schweitzer? You afraid? Did you really think you'd get away? How could you get away from yourselves? Maybe you've forgotten that. He that fleeth from the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that getteth up out of the pit shall be taken in the snare. Maybe you've forgotten that for the creators of destruction and disaster, there is no way out. Ladies and gentlemen, the jet-propelled Lockheed Shooting Star is the fastest plane ever built. Trim as a bullet, highly maneuverable, armed to the teeth, this sensational new plane is capable of fighting at high altitudes, striking, disappearing, bringing fear and terror to the enemy. The jet-propelled Shooting Star. With it, Lockheed has again established new standards in the field of aircraft design and manufacture. Again, Lockheed originality, Lockheed science and skill have helped maintain air supremacy for the United Nations. This time with a plane so superior that it may revolutionize all flying, be it for war or for peace. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Lockheed leads in jet propulsion. And in the great age of flight to come, you may well look to Lockheed for continuation in this leadership. Lockheed, makers of the new jet-propelled shooting star. Years ahead in the science of flight. And now a word from Lockheed star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our last program in the present series. So I'd like to say a very sincere thanks to the men of Lockheed Aircraft Corporation who have given every possible assistance in making this show as good a show as we could make it. And of course, my thanks to my favorite company of artists and technicians. Felix Mills, our superlative music master. Milton Merlin, author of tonight's exploit and most of the stories in this series. Francis Farrago, writer. Thor LaCroix, our excellent engineer. Floyd and Monty, our sound effect wizards. John McIntyre, our grand announcer. And the cast. Gigi Pearson, who plays the charming Nancy Bessington. Leon Belasco, who is my rascally shadow, Pagon Zellsmith. And such fine actors as B. Benaderet. Lucille Meredith and Jeanette Nolan. Frank Graham, Theodore Bonnells, Will Wright, Joe Granby, Charlie Lung, Bob Bruce, Vic Rodman, Ed MacDonald, and my many other friends in the cast. Well, naturally, I've saved my final salute for Jack Johnstone, our producer and director whose magic wand has safely and brilliantly guided the man called X to his many adventures. And to you, my most highly esteemed audience, my profoundest thanks of all. So until we meet again on the air, good night. Herbert Marshall's appearance is through courtesy of Metro-Golden-Mayor. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. John McIntyre speaking. This is the Blue Network of the American Broadcasting Company.